Just a quick moment on modeling. We already talked about this in the final video of the quadratic uh, chapter. So modeling is just applying the stuff you learn in this chapter to real life scenarios. Um, so it says in the spec that you specifically might be asked to apply straight line graphs to uh, modeling uh, scenarios uh, too. Annoyingly, there's not many many questions on straight line modeling because the emphasis on modeling has only really been uh, done in the new spec rather than the old spec. So the only questions you'll find on straight line modeling would be either in the new spec uh, papers, which I don't really want to use as there's not many of them available and I, I, I kind of want to stick to the old spec, or in the book. And I'm not going to use those in these videos. That's just stealing other people's resources. Um, so my best advice to this is just do uh, the questions uh, in the book. Um, so really quick, I just want to quickly talk about proportionality as it talks this, about this in the book. I already um, discussed this in the point of intersection uh, video in the graphs and transformations um, set of videos um, because it was in that area of the spec. So if you want a bit more of an in-depth discussion, uh, go to that video. Um, but all you need to know is that um, in terms of proportionality, if you have an equation in the form y, is equal to k of x, where y and x are variables, and k is a constant, you can write this as y is proportional to x with this alpha uh, symbol here. Um, all this uh, means is that as x increases, y increases. This is what this, um, this proportional means. So here's an example that the spec specifically mentions about the link between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So I quickly made this question that I'll go through now that I think is quite realistic that you'll be asked. So for part A, they want you to find an equation linking C and F in the form F is equal to AC plus B. And what this is hinting at you is they want you to treat F as the Y variable and C as the X variable. And we're given two so-called coordinates where we've got 50 degrees is equivalent to 122 degrees and 100 degrees Celsius is equivalent to um, 212 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So therefore we can find the gradient being equal to remember that the uh, Fahrenheit are the so-called Y is the y variable so it's going to be on the top 212 minus 122 and on the bottom it's going to be 100 minus 50 and if we put this into a calculator you'll find that it is 9 over 5 and now we've got the gradient we can use the formula um, y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. Now remember that we're treating Fahrenheit as the y variable and Celsius as the x variable. So we can rewrite this in this example as f minus f1 is equal to m c minus c1 because we're treating f as y and c as um, x. And then we can do f minus f1 so we can use either of the two uh, so-called coordinates I'm just going to use the 50 degrees and 122 so it's going to be f minus 122 because that's the Fahrenheit is equal to m which is 9 over 5 c minus c1 which is going to be equal to 50 we can expand this to f minus 122 is equal to 9 over 5 c minus 90 and then what we can do we can rearrange this into the form said here we can do f is equal to 9 over 5 c minus 90 plus 122 which is going to be equal to plus 32 and therefore this is uh, the equation in the form f is equal to a c plus b. Note that it doesn't say anything about a and b having to be integers, so uh, we leave it in this form here. So for part b, this is actually the modelling part of the question, where it wants you to discuss what a and b represent in the model, and aka what a and b actually represent in real life. So you may have noticed that the equation is actually in the form y is equal to m x plus c. The only difference obviously is that x and y are replaced by c and f. And therefore if we want to discuss what a and b represent in real life, we can therefore say that we can just compare them to what they mean in the y-intercept and the gradient. So let's start with b. So b is 32 and b is the y-intercept. So what does the y-intercept actually mean in real life? Well it means at 0 degrees Celsius, because remember the y-intercept is when x is equal to zero and we're uh, saying Celsius is x in this example. Zero degrees Celsius is equivalent to 
32 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what B means in real life. So what about A? Well, A is the gradient. So what does the gradient actually represent in real life? Well, what it means is that for every one degree Celsius increase, there's a 9 over 5 degree Fahrenheit increase. And that's what it represents. So for every 1 degree Celsius increase, there's a 9 uh, over 5 degree Fahrenheit increase. And that's what the gradient and the kind of slope actually represents, is for every 1 degree, how much uh, degree Fahrenheit goes up. So that's what the gradient actually represents. And this is the answer to part B.